So we've introduced Lagrangian mechanics and we've seen how to use uh, the Lagrange formulism to find the equations of motion for different physical systems. And now I wanna show another technique to use with the Lagrange formalism, uh, and that's using constraints. And so with constraints, what I mean are systems where the mass is only allowed to move either in one plane or in one direction. For example, if we have a ramp, the mass is only allowed to move along the ramp. So if this is X and this is Y, then there is a constraint where the Y position divided by the X position has to be equal to tangent of theta. And so I'm gonna show you two techniques using this constraint to find the equations of motion for a mass moving down a ramp. But before I do that, let's look at this situation in Newtonian uh, formalism. So we've seen this before where we can rotate our coordinate system so that it's like this. And then we find the acceleration down the ramp is G sine theta. What if instead of rotating our coordinate system, we wanna keep the y coordinate up and the x coordinate in the horizontal? Then if we have this acceleration down the ramp, A, and we want the X and Y components of that acceleration, then to get the X acceleration, we just take A times cosine of theta, where this is theta. And for Y, we take A times sine theta. So this would be G sine theta cosine theta and this would be g sine squared theta. So these are the two accelerations that we'll be looking for uh, when we use our constraints and the Lagrange formalism. So to start, we'll have our ramp And again, we're not going to rotate our coordinate system. X, Y. And we have our constraint that uh, Y over X equals tan theta. Or we can write Y equals X tan theta. And so if we wanted to approach this with the Lagrangian, we would do our normal t minus v, the uh, kinetic energies are one half m times x dot squared plus y dot squared, and the potential energy is due to gravity. So now where the constraint comes in is we can replace our y's with x times tan theta and our y dots with x dot tan theta. So if we do that, our Lagrangian becomes m over two x dot squared plus 
x dot squared tan squared theta minus mgx tan theta. Okay, now if we do the time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot, we would get mx double dot plus mx double dot tan squared theta. And then the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x would be negative m g tan theta. So if you put that all together, so this uh, first part, you can factor out an mx double dot, and then you get 1 plus tan squared theta. And so putting that all together, mx double dot times 1 plus tan squared theta equals negative mg tan theta. So your masses can go away. Now we've got x double dot times 1 plus tangent squared theta equals negative g tan theta. Okay, so now we have to do some trig. x double dot times 1 plus tan squared theta equals negative g tan theta. So 1 plus tangent squared theta is a trig identity. So this is x double dot times secant squared theta equals negative g tan theta. Secant is uh, 1 over cosine squared theta. And tangent is sine theta over cosine theta. So this one of these squared will cancel one of the cosine theta on the other side. And you're left with x double dot equals negative g sine theta cosine theta. And that's exactly what we got before uh, when we looked at the Newtonian side. So same as Newton. All right. Uh, so now we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll take our Lagrangian m over 2 x dot plus y dot squared minus m g y. Only now we'll replace all of our y's with x, or we already replaced all of our y's with x tan theta. So now we'll replace all of our x's with y divided by tan theta. And that also means x dot is replaced by y dot over tan theta. All right, so start plugging that in m over 2, so x dot squared will become y dot squared over tangent squared theta plus y dot squared minus mgy. Do your partial derivative with respect to y dot, take the time derivative, total time derivative of that, And you would get my double dot over tangent squared theta plus my double dot. And then the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to y equals negative mg. Okay, so we have my double dot over tangent squared theta plus my double dot equals negative mg. Uh, so do you see there's an m in every term, cancel all those out. 
factor out the y double dot and you have one over tangent squared theta plus one equals negative g. Do some more trig. This is cotangent squared theta plus one equals negative g. Cotangent squared theta plus one is an identity that is cosecant squared. Cosecant squared theta. Cosecant squared theta is one over sine squared theta. And so y double dot equals negative g sine squared theta. Which is again the same as the Newtonian. So that's one way to use your constraints is to just plug them directly into the Lagrangian. So now another way to use your constraints is by using Lagrange multipliers. And so what this looks like, so we had our constraint written down as y over x equals tangent theta. Now I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to move the tangent theta to the other side and say that y over x minus tan theta equals zero. And now I'm going to call this some function f of x, y. And so it's important that we write our equation such that it equals zero, and I'll show you why. Now, when we write down our Lagrangian, we have t minus v. But now I'm going to subtract lambda times this function f. And I can do that because we've said that f equals zero. So I can subtract zero from an equation and not change the equation. This lambda term is the Lagrange multiplier. And so if we write down our Lagrangian now, we have m over two, x dot squared plus y dot squared minus mgy minus lambda times y over x minus tan theta. Okay, so now we do the same thing that we always do with the Lagrangian. Uh, take our derivatives to get the Euler-Lagrange equations. So d Lagrangian by dx dot and take the total time derivative of that. Then we just get mx double dot. Partial Lagrangian with respect to x. Okay, so now there's an x term in this Lagrange multiplier and it's one over negative one over x. So the derivative of negative one over x is positive one over x squared. And so this will be lambda y over x squared. And so our equation would be mx double dot equals lambda y over x squared. So I'll call that equation one. Equation two will come from our y Euler Lagrange and y double dot and then dl by dy. Now there's a couple more terms. So this is m negative mg 
minus lambda over x. And you see that this tangent term uh, doesn't enter in because there's no partial, there's no x or y dependence here. So when you take the partial derivative, uh, that term doesn't contribute. And so now equation two is my double dot equals negative mg minus lambda over x. So now we uh, don't know x double dot, y double dot, or lambda. So we need some other equations to help us solve this. And we can get those from our uh, constraint equation. So y over x equals tan theta. So y equals x tan theta and also y dot equals x dot tan theta and y double dot equals x double dot tan theta. So first I'm going to solve equation one for lambda then plug that into equation two and then use the constraints to find x double dot and y double dot. Okay, so equation one was mx double dot equals lambda y over x squared. So solving that for lambda, we get mx double dot x squared over y. Okay, so then I'm taking this and going into equation two and equation two was by my double dot equals negative mg minus lambda over x. Okay, so plugging that in, my double dot equals negative mg minus mx double dot x squared over x. So one of these x's cancels with the denominator. And now we have my double dot equals negative mg minus mx double dot times x. Oh, over y. All right, so now we have y double dot and x double dot in the same equation. So I'm going to use my constraints to replace. Uh, let's start with, so we have this equation. Okay, maybe I'll call this equation three. So we'll start with replacing the y's. So let's replace y with uh, y over yeah, y equals x tan theta. So y double dot equals x double dot tan theta. Okay, so this is m, x, and I'm not going to write all these m's because you can see there's an m in each term, so they'll cancel. So y double dot is x double dot tan theta equals negative g minus x double dot. And now x over y, x over y equals uh, one over tangent theta. 
So this is x double dot over tan theta. So let's add this x double dot to the other side. So x double dot tan theta plus x double dot divided by tan theta equals negative g. Now we factor out the x double dot and we have tan theta plus one over tan theta equals negative g. So now we do some more trig, x double dot times tan theta plus one over tan theta g. So let's rewrite this in sines and cosines. So this is sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta. Let's get a common, common denominator. So the first term we multiply by sine theta. So we get sine squared theta on top and then sine theta cosine theta on the bottom. Second term, we multiply top and bottom by cosine theta. So we get cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. Now, if we combine those fractions, we get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. And we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So this is x double dot times one over sine theta cosine theta equals negative g. And so x double dot equals g sine theta cosine. And that's the same as before. And so now let's finish up by taking equation three, which was x double dot, oh, no, it's not, it's y double dot equals negative g. minus x double dot x over y, x double dot x over y. And so last time we replaced all of our y's with x's, so now we'll replace all of our x's with y over tan theta and x double dot with y double dot divided by tan theta. All right. So we have y double dot minus g minus y double dot divided by tan theta. And then x over y is one over tan theta. So now we've got y double dot equals negative g minus y double dot over tan squared theta. Move the y double dots to the same side. Then factor out the y double dot, one plus one over tan squared theta, is negative g. This is a trig identity again, because it's one plus cotangent squared theta. One plus cotangent squared theta is one over, or just secant squared. cosecant squared.
one plus cotangent squared theta is just cosecant squared theta. Cosecant squared theta is one over sine squared theta. And so y double dot is negative g sine squared theta, which is again, uh, what we had found previously. And so doing it this way, we still have one more uh, variable to solve for, and that is uh, lambda. So from equation one, we had found that lambda equals mx double dot x squared over y. x squared. And so if we wanted to replace x double dot with what we found, which was g sine theta cosine theta, we would have uh, the value of our Lagrange multiplier. So we've looked at this problem several different ways now, and we've come to the conclusions that x double dot is negative g sine theta cosine theta, and y double dot is negative g sine squared theta. So let's check to make sure that this makes physical sense. So uh, maybe I'll rewrite this differently. So x double dot is g sine theta cosine theta and x or y double dot is negative g sine squared theta. All right, and now let's look at our boundary cases. So when theta equals zero, you just have a flat ramp. And at theta equals zero, x double dot equals zero because uh, sine of zero is zero. And so that makes sense. If you have a flat ramp, your um, block isn't going to move in the x direction. And if we set theta equal to 90, the ramp would be straight up and down. And again, x double dot would be 0, uh, which makes sense because there's no x motion if the block is just moving up and down. So this is telling us that we'll only get an x acceleration if we're somewhere between flat and completely vertical, which makes sense. Now let's check for the y direction. So again, for x equals 0, or for theta equals 0, uh, you have a flat ramp. And now y double dot equals 0. So a flat ramp, you won't have any acceleration in the y direction. And that's because uh, we still have a constraint. So even if you set theta equal to 0, y over x equals tan theta, y over x so tangent of zero is zero. So you still get y over x equals zero, which means that y equals zero. And basically y can't move 
off of uh, the plane y equals zero. And so there can't be any motion up or down. So this, can, this uh, acceleration makes perfect sense. Now, if theta equals 90, you get your vertical ramp. And if you plug uh, 90, sine of 90 is one. Uh, so you would just get y double dot equals negative g, which again makes sense. So if the block is constrained to fall down the ramp, then you would have all of your acceleration in the y direction and the block would basically be free fall. And so that all makes sense. So it might seem a bit complicated to do uh, the Lagrangian formulation to solve a block on a ramp, uh, and then even more difficult still to solve it using constraints and potentially using Lagrange multipliers. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a simple example that uh, I think we have solved plenty of times before. Uh, so you kind of know how the problem works. And now we have a new way of approaching this problem and approaching other problems in the future using uh, these constraints, either to plug directly into the Lagrangian or to use the constraints to set up Lagrange multipliers. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.